lonely night I was a sinner too Till I heard a voice from heaven Said there is work to do So I took my master's hand And I joined the Christian band Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my As we take our seats, certainly the Lord is good. I said, certainly <laughs> the Lord is good. I'm going to try it one more time. I said, certainly the Lord is good. Amen. And his mercy endure to all generations how we bless God and thank God for this another Lord's Day another expression of his loving kindness and his tender mercy you ought to just look at somebody and tell them he looked he looked beyond all of my faults and saw fit for me to be here and i thank god for his grace and for his goodness we bless god for those of you who are in the house and those of you who are at the house who are worshiping with us in our cyber sanctuary if you would stand with me now both here and at home for the reading of the word of god will a man robbed God, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithe and offerings. Ye curse with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field saith the Lord of hosts. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning as we make ready to go to God in prayer, listen. 
why not think in relation to praising him first? You know, I've combated, I've, I've combated this spirit since 22 at the end where y'all have been too quiet. And I'm waiting on the real saints to show up in service with me so that we can celebrate on Sunday the goodness of the Lord. Why not right now? Because you understand what I've been trying to teach you all these years and what you've heard. To make it to become a reality that when praises go up, blessings come down. Which means every now and again, I need to place in front of my prayer before I pray some praise. Because first of all, I thank God that I have a mind to pray. Because I could be sitting somewhere in a corner somewhere trying to figure out who I am what day of the week it is i could be babbling and not even knowing that i've stroked out and i cannot do and form sentences but i praise god this morning at prayer time that as i make ready to go to god in prayer i praise god for my mind ah uh, y'all ain't ready I, I, I praise him. I praise him that I've got a mind to, to pray. I thank him for my mind because in the confines of my mind is a memory. I remember what I went through yesterday. I, I see what he's done for me today. I re remember and I recall to my mind what I prayed to him for for him to do and I realized what he has done for me that I did not deserve that he did not have to do for me and so I thank God right now for the opportunity to pray and to pray in my right mind so again before we go to God in prayer why don't you take this moment this opportunity to put your hands together and open your mouth unashamedly and give God your best praise for what and for all that he has done for you come on somebody oh Jesus hey God thank you Lord Come on, you can praise him a little while longer. You know he heard that prayer that you didn't think, he, oh shucks, you didn't think he would answer. You realized that it was nobody but the Lord that opened that door that was closed in your face that gave you that opportunity that you didn't think you were going to get. But somebody ought to praise God that God showed up in the midst of what you were going through and he made a way. Somebody in here ought to shout it today and you ought to realize it today and shout, I've been delivered. God did it. He brought me out. He opened the door. He gave me another chance. And I believe I'll praise his name. I wish I had some help in here. Because somebody said when I was a boy, praise him in the morning. Praise him at the noonday. Praise him with the going down of the sun. And the Bible says, let everything that have breath. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I ain't talking about you, but you are that thing that he's talking about in the word. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Clap your hands and give God some amazing praise. God for your glory for your amazing grace we thank you we acknowledge your presence among us and we ask you God to touch right now in the name of Jesus 
touch every person touch every pew touch every home God right now that's tuned into this worship say to the Lord rebuke you now the blood of Jesus is against you God forgive me of my sins I've done some wrong and God right now because I want to worship you I want to worship you I need to worship you I need to get into your presence so that you can make some corrections to my life to my ears to the direction of my life even at this particular point in time God forgive me try me all over again give me your peace Give me your power give me your presence and then god give me your word anointing on my life touch god touch god heal god deliver set free right now in the name of jesus god break that yoke right now that's bound around somebody's neck that's dragging them down that's burdening them down that's blocking them from their blessing they think they're right they're wrong god release the burden Work a miracle right now. Work a miracle. We, we've seen you do it. We're, we're witnesses of your awesome power. You are great. And you're greatly to be praised. And so God, we don't ask you for nothing that you're not able to do. You're not able to give. You're not able to supply. Church, God. Work that miracle. Renew that mind. Renew that spirit. Renew that heart. In the name of Jesus, God, that weight of heaviness, lift it now. God, that spirit of sorrow and sadness, lift it now. The burden of bereavement, God, lift it now. Let your joy flood our souls. Look on us today. Have mercy. Bless us, God. Strengthen us, God. Open our mouths that we might praise you unashamedly because, God, when we were praying and we were crying and we were going through, we didn't have any apprehensions. As it related to calling on your name, we called it. We called it loud. We called it long. We called it until we got an answer. And now, God, allow us to lift our voices in praise to you. Spirit of the living God, again, fall fresh on us. Fall fresh in this place. Unstop blinded eyes and open deaf ears and loose that stammering stuck tongue. God, get the glory. Get the glory. Heal the sick. Mend the broken hearted. Set the captive free. Say that you don't win. You are a loser. You were a loser from the beginning. And I call you what you are. You are a defeated foe. You will not get the victory over me even though you tried it already. You won't get it. I'm going to praise my way through. I'm going to praise my way out of. I'm going to praise until I get power, I'm going to pray and praise until I get peace. Touch. Send your word. And send your anointing that makes preaching easy. Break up even now before the word goes forth, the fallow ground in our lives, that your word may take root in our lives and bless our lives and spring forth into everlasting life. This is my prayer. Grant it to be done in the name of Jesus our Christ. For his sake I pray. Somebody hearing at home shout amen with a hand praise. Blessings upon you, those of you who are seated in our cyber sanctuary who are tuned in today by way of Facebook Live, YouTube, you're on the conference line, or you're streaming live from our website. We thank God for your presence in our midst as we seek to worship 
our God. Listen, for you, it's offering time in our virtual audience. There are four vehicles and means through which you can give while you're at home electronically and otherwise. You can log on to our website at www.ombmbc.com backslash giving and give your tithes, your offering, and any seed offering you would to plant into this ministry. Otherwise, today is a pastoral Sunday. Sunday, you can go to www.ompmbc.com backslash offering and plant a seed of love into the life of our pastor. Otherwise, paypal.com, click donations, give your tithe offering, pastoral love gift seed offering, any other offering you would to plant into this ministry. If you cannot use or get on either of those, you can simply write a check out right now while you're in worship because you have not worshiped until you have given write that check out sign it dated on the memo line tell us how much you're giving in your tithe how much you're giving in offering how much you're giving the pastor love gift and any other seed offering put it in an envelope addressed to the church at 6614 south blackstone avenue chicago illinois 60637 put a stamp on it put it in the mail we're soon to get it otherwise if you're out and about anytime this week you can stop by the church on this blackstone street side the first door that you will encounter is a black door to you're right. There's a mail slot in that door. You can place your tithe, offering, pastoral love gift, any other seed offering in that mail slot. We will receive it. Just because you're not present in this place does not mean that you need to be or should be absent. You don't have to negate the offering. God has so deemed it and made it whereby you can give from wherever you are. And don't forget, God loves a cheerful giver amen amen come on put those hands together everybody as our ensemble leads us in song
give them another great big God bless you. Thank you so much, Ensemble. Stand with me both here and at home for the reading of the word again. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 11 are those verses that we're concentrating on as our sermon series text. Again, just for the sake of recapitulation, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes with an S and offerings with an S. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now he would say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. You may be seated. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk again about what God will do for a dime. Oh God, touch, strengthen, open minds to be receptive to this message that you have placed on our agenda to help us that we might be the recipients of greater blessings by learning how to give. Bless your word to continue with us to accomplish that that you have set it out to do that it will not return back to you void is my prayer in Jesus name I pray and ask it. Amen. Turn to the person sitting beside you. Uh, in the room, cross your row and say to them, neighbor, pastor's going to preach again about what God will do for a dime. Turn somebody else on the other side of you, in front of you, and behind you so that no one is left out. Somebody else in the room, somebody else across the room, even if they're not in the room, shout in that house, even to yourself. And for yourself, neighbor, oh neighbor, pastor's going to preach about what God will do for a dime. A dime. A dime. A dime. dime smallest of all the U.S. coins and currency, a dime. That, that is made up of either 10 pennies, two nickels, a nickel, five pennies. What God will do for a dime. And I don't know whether or not you have ever really stop pause parenthetically long enough to think about what God will do and what God has done for you for a dime. When you were talking about how broke you are, I ain't got a dime. How you were talking about people and telling them as you sum them up simplistically, you ain't worth a Dying, ten, I've tried to teach you. The number of divine government, ten, the perfect number, 
10, the number that begins the double digit, God will take your dime and change your entire life. I wish I had a witness. Listen, brothers and sisters, I have unapologetically shared with you the mere fact two times over what God will do for a dime. I shared with you personally in the first sermon of this series that God will keep a roof over your head. For a dime. If you, if you will obey him and then I shared with you the very mere fact that God at the same time while he will keep a roof over your head God will because of your neglect your disobedience of the dime will curse you not only with a curse but with a double curse it's seen right here in the text I'm not making this up here he says First of all, let me help you understand Israel, Judah in particular. Number one, as he speaks to us through his word to the church today, let me tell you what heaven would have me to tell you. You're blessed. That was the saddest praise I've heard in a long time. Let me say it again. You are blessed you can tell all the tales of the crypt that you want to because you are in debt up over your head but when you look at your life and how you're living in spite of the debt and your debt ratio you are blessed you still have look at somebody and tell them I still have I'll be honest I still have I still have a roof over my head my lights are still on my gas is still on I still have some food in my refrigerator and in my cupboard I still have a change of clothes I still have running water I still have soap and deodorant and mouthwash and toothpaste I still have towels to wash my body I still have sheets to lay on I still have a bed I still have all of the things that God said that I would have because he chose to bless me and he chose to bless me as Jabez would tell us in spite of ourselves my name means pain I don't know whether I produced it or it's been laid on me but he blessed me in spite of it he has blessed me, not only in spite of, but he has blessed me indeed. Listen, brothers and sisters, so what if you're living from paycheck to paycheck? You better remember that one word in between that, I'm living. I'm, I'm living and God is showing me that I'm living with as well as without because God has chosen to bless me. Now the problem that I'm having even when I look at this as it relates to giving and giving in the simplest form is how could you shut the door in your own face? Let me set the tone. I wanted to try to see if I couldn't conclude this, but I just don't believe it because there's so much in here that you need to get out of here so that you can be better after having heard these series of sermons. And please understand, I'm not preaching them because I want to preach them. At all, it doesn't happen that way because if I could preach what I wanted to preach, I'd preach a hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon type of sermon every Sunday. I would jump and I would shout, I would leap and I would laugh. But there are times for that and there are times for instructing and for correcting for your growth and for your edification in order that you might be pleasing unto God. I think I said something. So I said to you, um, if, if you understand who blesses you and you understand that you are blessed, listen, now comes the time for you to understand how you become blessed. I didn't say became, I said become. I'm talking about from this day for first of all let me help you to understand something realistically put this on you and help you to get it so take this hang it on the lines of your mind and let the Holy Ghost blow on it 
if you gonna be blessed beyond this point and, and in spite of doing what you need to do that the word of God says you ought to do the first thing you're gonna have to stop doing is you have to stop lying I ain't got 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 it's a lie and it's a lie let me preach it like I feel it today from the very pit of hell because anything that comes your way at this point and accosts you and arrests you and calls for you to do something you may not physically have it in your hand but I declare you'll find a way but the sad indictment again is when it comes to the church and when it comes to giving in the church to the church and God forbid to the preacher Everybody get lost in the shuffle. We forget how blessed we are. We forget how we became blessed. We forget how our blessings flow and whom the Lord gives instructions to us to do what it is that we're to do in order that we might be blessed and we forget it because we devaluate not only the dime but the deliverer. Because see the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and then it backs up in Romans and says how can they hear without a preacher oh I think I'm preaching this morning but listen brothers and sisters God takes this unknown fella by the name of Malachi to whom nobody knows much of anything about other than he wrote this minor book of prophecy he spoke to Israel on God's behalf as it related to their present current condition they had left God and Malachi the last book of the Old Testament claps hands with John the revelator on the Isle of Patmos because they had left their first love that John speaks of in the last book and now here is what God is telling Malachi his manservant to the children of Israel to Judah in particular y'all done just messed up because you have devaluated your relationship what do you have when you devaluate your own relationship here here he gives them an opportunity because number one they're convicted and so he poses it to them hey, watch this now let me let me let me give you historical background as they settle back into Palestine from which they had been previously evicted the walls and the gates had all been destroyed their prosperity was gone down to zero and here God even in the midst of their hard headedness their hard heartedness their disobedience still moves to restore them back to the place predicated upon a promise that he has just made to their forefather Abraham and now steps in with Malachi and says tell them to return unto me yeah. tell them it's time tell them it's time they done been there done that history has already been written their forefathers died in the wilderness because this same disobedience their forefathers died in the wilderness because this same greed they out there they moving on their way to the promised land they going through the Sinai desert God supplies their needs watch it they are blessed just like we are strange thing about it is that while wandering for 38 years in that wilderness their clothes nor their shoes wore out. Those had to be better shoes than Sherman's. Flo Shine, Johnston Murphy's, Red Bottoms, Gucci's. Those shoes 
that they wore were some good shoes. See, that's why they got happy when they thought about it. When they, when they thought about heaven, our four parents got happy when they thought about it in relation to what God had done for Israel. And they said, you know what? I got shoes. You got shoes. All God's children got shoes. And we may not get the shoes that don't wear out till we get to heaven. But when we get to heaven, we're going to put on our shoes. Walk around God's heaven. Listen, neither did their clothes. We're out. That was strange. It was strange. It was strange. And let me throw this in parenthetically at the beginning of this year, this new year, because this is the last Sunday of the first month of 2023. Let me tell you something. If you don't want stuff to wear out on you, you need to take care of it. You need to preserve it. Your health, your wealth, your mind, your body. Listen, brothers and sisters, it was God who created the lifestyle that caused their clothes not to wear out. Because many of us still have clothes in our wardrobes that are years old, but we have them still because they have not worn out and we still have some that have not worn out that we have grown out of. But don't forget, God fed them. He fed them with manna from heaven daily. But they got greedy. And see, what we fail to realize in the real world is, as it relates to our own personal wealth and economy, that we ain't looked at, we've heard about it, we've told, but we've ignored it. The more you make, the more he takes, Uncle Sam. The more you make, in most cases, the more you spend. Because I got it now. I got it now. And you go to buying stuff. And one of the worst things that could have ever happened in our lives outside of ATM last Sunday was this pandemic that produced this um, Amazon and, 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 and this DoorDash and this Uber Eats. And it's home delivery because now people get online and search, surf the net and buy things that they do not need. It's just spending money. Just spending money. Just spending money. We've, 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 literally, we've literally canceled UPS out. And we have placed them now with Amazon. Because most of the stuff that comes to your door is Amazon. Amazon driver. Bringing it to your house. And you are just adding up. And you get things. And you get things. And you acquire things. Because now it's, it's, it's more amenable to you. You can tap and touch and get. A lot of greed still in the mingles itself in there with it, and we become hoarders. Let me ask a question. How much Lysol do you still have in your house? How, 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 how much hand sanitizer even though you ain't using it anymore because we think that the pandemic is over how, how, how much how, how much because we got it because we didn't want to take chance of running out of it and now that we've settled into the fact that we've seen the numbers going down while they are yet fluctuating and they are no longer fascinating us with numbers on the news every day. You don't know where it is. You just know it is. The death toll that had us taken and smitten and concerned is no longer being told us any more hospitalization unless it's something new on the horizon such as RSV uh, does not dare, is not being disseminated to us now. 
So we think it's over. And guess what? We're left with goods and commodities that we paid for that we will have until the spray of aerosol no longer sprays out of the can. Cause of greed. <coughs> well, greed placed them where they were. And it will place you as it placed them if you're not careful in a bad place. And that's the reason why I've told you over and over again, the reason why God will not, not that he cannot, but that he will not give you everything that you ask for all at once. <clears throat> and that's because you will lose appreciation for it if you get it all at one time. And you will lose appreciation for prayer and for God because you'll say, I got it. I'm going somewhere. That's where a whole lot of us have arrived in our spirits. And that's why we are deprived of blessings and we deprive the church and God of the blessing that he calls for from you. Do you know that as blessed as you are, you're blessed to be a blessing? Not, 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 not to say I got it, not to be stingy or selfish or choose to whom I give to or whom I don't give to. Listen, the Bible simply says it like this. It says don't take it into, into consideration. Who? It just says give. And it says now when you do it in that way and you give without thinking, listen, you don't give until it hurts. You give until it helps. And when you give until it helps, it will not only help the person you're giving to, it'll help you too. Because at the end of the day, we stand in violation of the word of God as it relates to how and to whom we give. Because we're so choice, we're so particular, and we're so self-righteous, and we suggest what they what he what she doesn't need well who made you lord who put you in charge of saying what i need because of what you see hello because everybody that knows anything about seeing understand that everything that you see is not as it appears I wish I had somebody that could help me. Listen, but greed blinds the eyes. It blinds the mind and the determination. And it causes one to shut down on their own blessing. And God, brothers and sisters, will cause you to lose what you have stored up. I'm in the Bible because from the book of Exodus to the Gospels, you will discover that when God rained down manner on Israel so that they would not go hungry so that they would not starve in the wilderness on their way to their promised land but so that they would have a testimony that God will supply my need whenever I am in need and wherever I am in need of it and then it moves on into the New Testament and it curses us again the only difference is it doesn't say you curse with the curse and it doesn't say well a man robbed God it says there was a man who ended up one year with a great harvest. And a greater harvest than he ever anticipated or expected in his life. He looked at it. He became happy, joyful, gratified because he had had more that year than he had ever had. And he said, you know what? What am I going to do with it? He didn't think about charity. He didn't think about homelessness. He didn't think about helping anybody other than himself. And when you don't think about helping anybody other than himself, you only solidify the fact that you have a me, my, and I mindset and mentality. And that will kill you at the very core of your blessings. He said to himself, he asked himself, what am I going to do with it? And then he made the mistake of answering himself. He didn't pray about what am I going to do with it? He answered himself and he said, I'm going to tear down these, because he had more than one. He didn't realize he was blessed because anytime you got more than one, you blessed. 
Did you hear what I said? He had more than one barn and he had more. Let me preach Bible to you. He had more than one barn full of crop. And he said, I will tear down these old barns and I'll build one big barn to hold all of the bumper crop and everything else that I have left over. Preach Reverend, I think I will. God will allow you to run away with your thoughts. And at the end of the day, let me tell you what God will do. He'll put a chokehold on you. Did you hear me? God will stop your heart from beating because he will show up right where you live and say to you what you don't want to hear. I'm in Bible. He showed up that night after the man had finished building and had finished filling. And he went home and he sat down that night. And he said to himself, because he crazy, he talking to himself. He ain't talking to God. He ain't thanking God for nothing. You need to learn how to thank God for every little gift as well as the big ones. And he sat down and he spoke to himself a third time. Three times is a charm. Three points to every good sermon. He spoke to himself the third time, and when he did it, he cursed himself. He said, soul, which he didn't control, be at ease. You know what he did? Listen to it, and you'll see what I'm saying. He said, soul, be at ease. Soul, which you don't own, which you don't control, be at ease. Can I tell you what he did? He robbed God. He took from God what belonged to God. Reverend, what are you saying? I'm trying to help somebody understand. Your tithe, as I said last week, are holy. Your offerings are holy unto the Lord. And when you withhold them for whatever reason, you Rob God. And you rob God as a petty thief because you're not robbing God of anything great. It ain't like you standing up in heaven saying, give it to me. Or else. You cannot do that. But you're standing with a little that is required of you saying, I ain't doing that. I wish I would get at church that. I wish I would give that in the offering. I wish I would support that cause. The devil is a lie because you are robbing God of little. When you have forgotten, I'm preaching, I hope y'all getting it. When you have forgotten that that same little is what becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. You do yourself more harm than good when you withhold from God. And therefore, ultimately, he says, listen, what you have done is you have received a harvest. Your check, Sunday number two. Your income, Sunday number two. Just for the sake of recapitulation. Social security check, pension check, regular check, donated check, given check, work for check, unwork for check. All of it. Is your harvest. But if you know anything about agriculture, you will discover and declare that one seed will produce a whole lot. So, what is the problem with you sharing? A little bit of the lot that you have. I don't care how many people you have in your house, in your household, in your family. When you receive of the Lord's hand, it is great. It is as in here. You don't have room enough to receive it. So thank God for mama. And not just my mama, but thank God for your mama. And thank God for your grandmama. And thank God for them from the south who were sharecroppers. And whenever they went out and they picked out of the field and they harvested, they brought it home. They blanched greens, put them in bags and peas and put them up and shucked 
corn and all of that other stuff and put it up. But they didn't just keep it to themselves. They shared it. I know how to pick greens. I know how to shell peas as part of my punishment coming up as a child in the South and tan up my auntie and uncle's house and they having had a garden in the backyard and I know about purple hull peas that get when you shell them they get all on your hand and your fingers go to turning purple like you're dying and all of that but 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 listen I don't have to because I've been blessed I don't have to pick green I don't have to shell peas. Even though I cook, my mother goes to the store. And when she goes to the store, she does it. And she does it just like Proverbs says for her house. And so while I don't live in there any longer, and my sister doesn't live in there any longer, and my brother doesn't live in there any longer, she still yet considers her house. Hello? And she passes it. I'm trying to get y'all to the place of understanding. Sharing. Here it is. Let me put it back on your plate because you said it. It sounded good when you said it. However, you don't do it. Sharing is caring. Do you care? Do, 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 you, do you care or are you that individual who likes people being dependent on you because that makes you feel needed? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Listen, give to them, but teach them when you give. Teach them. After you've given them the first fish, take them to the bank of the creek of the river and teach them how to fish. If you give them a fish, you feed them for a day. You teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. You learn how to share. Gives you a check. Gives you an annual income. A harvest. I'm back at the point again. Which means you're blessed. Corny phrase. Corny phrase. I hate to hear this. Corny phrase. You're blessed by the best. It's a corny phrase. It's a reality, but it's a corny phrase. I'm blessed by the best. Are you? But are you blessing the best so that you can reap the best? Because after you get through seeing that they are settled in to Palestine, after you get through seeing that God has restored the city, its gates and its walls, and their prosperity has come back upon them. And yet, if you read this text, as I was sharing with my preachers this morning, yet they have still not repented because they have not. They have not returned to God. Which means you ought to see yourself. Some of y'all see yourselves. You come to worship. You sit. You soak up the spirit. You hardly say amen. You will not sow a proper seed into the offering of any kind at all because of your mental, not spiritual, your physical disposition because any time you're going to give an offering it ought to be from within that's just like giving a gift with no meaning what good have you done if it is not from your heart listen brothers and sisters they not yet repented and God says, I tell you what you do. I'm going to give you another opportunity. Because he moves from conviction to challenge. And he says to them, therefore, return unto me. Now, when you return unto me, return unto me in every way that you turn from me. Just as proud as you left that church. Be just as proud to go back when the Lord sends you. Listen, brothers and sisters, he said to them, return unto me. Watch this, and I'll return unto you. I need somebody to understand that God is waiting on you. 
God is waiting on you to do the right thing. God is waiting on you to come into the knowledge of the truth and do the right thing instead of doing your own thing that is causing you pain that you will never associate with your giving. Uh, I think I said something. You ain't going to associate it with your giving. You, you, you will not do it. But there are things that occur in your life that's caused you to be cursed by God. That's horrible. To be cursed by God? Have you read the Old Testament to see what God did to people that he cursed in the Old Testament? Are you kidding? If God were to curse you, you better thank God for Jesus. And next Sunday when you come in here, you better say amen without me asking you. Because if it wasn't for Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father, you'd be dead and gone. I've tried to teach you and tell you that he was a zero tolerant. He's a zero tolerant God. He don't play with you. God said do it and you decided you wanted to challenge God by not doing it. You were a loser. You were a loser. God shall not lose. That's why I've tried to put it on your palate to get you to make life and giving more palatable in your life, in your favor, so that you can reap the greater benefits of that little bit that you give. And I said a little bit because you ain't rich. Somebody else should have said amen. Unless y'all done won the lottery and I don't know it. And if you won the lottery and I don't know it, I sure hope you put it. You at home too. I sure hope you put it in the offering. He said to them, I challenge you to return. See, see, some of you all have gotten so caught up in a bad spirit a bad manner of thinking that you are not functioning as God would have you to function with peace and joy and favor. Peace, joy, and favor. Let that, let that sink in. You ain't got no peace and therefore you ain't got no joy. Because you complain about everything. You ain't learned how to accept nothing other than your manner of thinking. And your way of thinking will cause you more pain than pleasure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can think to yourself about having a good time. But at the end of the day and doing things. But at the end of the day, if they're not befitting. And if they are not in conjunction with the will of God, you will not have any peace about it. And there's a difference, thank you Lord, I'll tell him, between peace and satisfaction. Because some of y'all done got satisfied with nothing and with doing nothing. And with having nothing. And God says you can reverse that operation. You can reverse that curse right now. All you got to do is learn how to give. Learn how to surrender. Learn how to be obedient because that's the lesson. Because you, just like Judah, are in a good place. And you still have not repented. Now who wouldn't love a God like that? That would continue to take care of me until I realized that I, I wish I could cuss in here. And say that I was the damn fool. Yeah. Me. Not nobody else. I'm the crazy one. Because God every day. Preach Reverend going on. Every day that I live. I cannot say I'm right. Every day. And therefore God still in my wrong. In my mess. In my stupidity. Showers me. With new mercy every day. And all he asks me to do is give. Give him some of my time. Give him some of my praise. Give him some of this little money I got in my pocket. I don't have no problem with giving it to the lottery folk. I don't have no problem with giving it to the sweepstakes folk. I don't have no problem with giving it to the casino folk and sitting there on the machine being hopeful. Listen, I need you to understand something, brothers and sisters. Every good and every perfect gift comes from God. God blesses. I say God blesses. And so all he asks for us to do in, in turn, turn around and share. And I told you the very first sermon, 
He did not ask us to tithe to take from us all that he had given us. So let's step up to the plate. And let's move out of this curse because we've been convicted. We done robbed God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody else say amen. It ain't moved your mouth. We have all at one point or the other, and some of y'all still do, and somebody going to do it today, have robbed God. And we've robbed him in the very areas that he says in this text. He says in tithe, which is the dime out of every dollar, which is the tenth part. He says, and offering. So let's go there. I'm glad you woke. And so I'll catch up with this on the second Sunday. Israel is in contempt. They've been challenged. They've been challenged to return to God totally, fully, and faithfully. Come back to God. Come back to me because I'm waiting on you. Come back to me, so says God, because I see what you're doing. I hear what you saying and I know what you need. You don't think God sees you living from paycheck to paycheck? But he also sees that you don't realize the reason why you're doing it. Do you, he he, he, he understands that you don't realize why you have heavy burdens on you and why you're living in the book of Habakkuk, I mean Haggai, and you got money, but you ain't satisfied. You got clothes full, a closet full. Ain't none of them warming you. He says, he says, listen, you live in plush, in sealed. Houses. Go back and read that guy. That's what it says. In sealed houses, and you have left the house of God undone. Question becomes here it is real. Those of you, my members who are looking at home, hear me now. Does your house need painting like this one? But you call this your church. Does, 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 does your house that you live in need as much work on it and money put in it as God's house? If it does, I'll tell you, keep your money. But I'm not going to tell you that because first and foremost, you are not about to live in a place, pay a mortgage and let the house fall down on you. The devil is a lie. You're not going to do it. Now, you're going to seek the most economic way to get it fixed, and you're going to give your landlord hell until he or she fixes it. And if they don't, you're going to report them as a slumlord. However, you ain't going to sit there, definitely not today, in 30, 22 degree weather with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, 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 the cold weather coming through your windows. You cold, your furnace is on, and your house is still cold. They got programs, city programs that you're going to figure out a way how to make it happen. Well, can I tell you the Bible that God said he'd already figured out the way. He said it. You read it. He said, bring all the time, every dime of it into the storehouse. Watch this. That there may be meat in mine house. There may be substance. There may be something so that we can work with in order to make sure that God's house is presentable at all times. That God's house has everything that it needs. And it is done through and by and with your tithes and offerings. So, let me cut it. Because I'm going to. Let me point you in the direction of what he's saying. He says, return unto me totally, completely. One of the ways that you had turned from me was you withheld your tithes and your offerings. 
And when you withhold your tithes and your offers, you not only set yourself up for a double curse, brothers and sisters, but you dishonor God. Because God knows not just what you got in your pocket, because he knows you're that individual who before you left the house put in your purse what you was intending to give, nothing more. Wrong. A holy God who deserves righteous praise and respect from those who he blesses on a daily basis are those in most cases who dishonor him with lies and disobedience. So he says, the tithe first. You robbed me because you've given me what you want because you're looking at your first fruit which is your gross which you're to give from not after Uncle Sam and not after 401k and not after the pension and not after the IRA and not after the IRS God first your first fruit from your harvest your tenth part comes from the top not from the bottom and it is not based upon even the subtotal. Now, when you go out to the restaurant and you tip, you're going to tip accurately. You tip from the subtotal. You don't tip from the total. You tip, I just taught you something because you didn't know it. You tip from the subtotal, not from the total. And if you ain't careful, like I said last week, if you're not careful, they've already hidden in there a surcharge. Because they raised, during the pandemic, they raised the percentage of tipping and not many of us detested it for a hamburger, for a steak that we ordered medium rare that came well done. And because we have phobias and heard stories about what they do in the back with the food. Well, if you ain't irate when you get ready to send it back, you don't have to worry about them doing anything. But if you snap off on them, I wouldn't send it back. I, 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 I wouldn't do that. But, but I wish somebody could see how you treat God who gives you good, perfect gifts. And you snap off on him as he moves to encourage you to give by way of his man or woman servant and you see a person instead of an altar to put your gift on that is to God and you dishonor him. So he says you rob me a tie because you give me what you want and y'all don't even tip it. You don't give him 18% because 10% is way, but you'll sit in them restaurants and you'll give 18 and 20 because you're fascinated with the personality of a person who is bringing you a plate who is not even preparing your meal. I wish y'all would get fascinated with me because all I do on Sunday is give you a plate. I, I, I didn't choose this sermon for the first of the year. I didn't choose it when I preached it the first time. It's God's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes because God has a plan for it. So we move from tithes. I hope y'all got it. First fruit, gross income, 10%. Into offerings because he said, you don't just rob me in tithe, but you rob me in offering. Because see, y'all don't know how it goes. You think you know. Everything that comes under the auspices of what we call the church and worship is definitely taken care of in Old Testament by way of the tithe. So they tithe and the tithe, as I told you, was divided three ways. A third of it went to the widow, a third of it went to the orphan, and a third of it went to the priest. Your preacher ought to be paid. Your preacher ought to be paid. At the end of the day, there is nothing wrong with a pastoral 
love offering for those who don't give it because it's biblical. It says, let the elders that rule well, preach the Bible, tell me, Reverend, that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, which means I ought to get my salary out of your tithing and be benefited with a love offering as well. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. It's the Bible. But people abhor the truth. And will not do. So let me show you what they did in Old Testament. As well as New Testament when they come down to offering. I'm glad you woke. He says. What we used to say. When I was a boy. It's time to raise the offering. And when we became more educated and modernized. And many of us had gone through seminary and things like that. We stopped talking about raising the offering. But what I discovered. In 2023, after going back, reading this again, and studying it all over again, I don't have the same manuscript. I have an updated manuscript now that includes more because when he said offerings, I went back to when I was teaching Bible class and I taught y'all about several of the offerings out of Leviticus. There was a peace offering. There was a sin offering. There was an offering for repentance. That, that, uh, that, that was, uh, was a heave offering. That was a wave offering. And all of that other stuff. There were many offerings that were named in the Bible in the book of Leviticus. But right here, <coughs> excuse me, when he says, you robbed me in tithes and in offerings, the offering that he speaks about is specific. Look at your neighbor. We finna learn something. And tell him we finna learn something. We, we finna learn something. Listen, the offering that he speaks of right here is chu. That's why it's an S. It ain't a post saints offering. It ain't just a free will offering. It's not just a mission offering. It's not just a communion offering. These two offerings that he speaks of here in the text have names. One of them that he speaks of, first of all, is the heave offering. H-E-A-V-E. -E, heave offering. All right? And some of y'all know that because it's agricultural. Uh, and it moves from heave into our vocabulary of old to a heap. So Big Mama took a heap of flour and put it in with the buttermilk and with the butter and made biscuits. A heap comes from heave. A heave offering combined with a wave offering. I'm going to help somebody. That's if you want to be helped. So these two offerings, first of all, these two offerings were offerings that were raised, R-A-I-S-E-D, because both of these offerings, a heave offering is a land-grown offering, while a wave offering is a raised offering because it reflects the raising of my hands in praise to God. And I don't see many folks, some of y'all that's too, 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 too sedity that I've passed over these 35 years who don't feel like, you know, you want to raise your hand, you do like this. But people who really need God for something and who really love God, raise their hands. You see what I'm saying? And, that, and, and, and I say to you often, come on, give him a wave offering. That is. Ain't B does it all the time. Just give God a wave offering. You, you give God a wave offering, it's high because I raise my hands. I give God a heave offering because it is raised, it is land grown. Come on, Rem, I got to quit, but I got to get this out. Cain and Abel teach us just like you from the south learned when you were there, you went to that church and you took that pastor a bag of groceries. It was raised and you didn't give him spotted tomatoes, greens that, that worms had put holes in, peas that had black spots on them. You picked out the best because back in the day they loved the preacher. My granddaddy was one I can tell you. They loved the preacher. 
and they gave to the preacher. They supported the preacher. Sometimes I resent being a black preacher based upon what I know about white preachers and white churches. White churches take care of their white pastors. I'm talking about from toothpick to toilet tissue. He does not buy himself anything. And they send him on vacation before they see the fatigue in his eyes. He don't eat White Castles. He doesn't eat McDonald's. He doesn't eat hot dogs. Not because he's any better than that, but because his members have subscribed to the word of God and they give their tithes and they give high and lofty raised offerings. Now, let me borrow a phrase from my son. Let that sink in like Ben Gay until you get a burning sensation. Your offerings need to change. If they're going to be in compliance with the Lord and with the word of God, it can't be the dollar. It has to meet the need. Your offering has to meet the need. Your offering, just like your tithe, has to meet the need. The church ought not have to suffer. The pastor ought not have to struggle because what you give ought to be in compliance with the word of God. And that will happen, preacher Reverend, as long as your priorities are proper. God chose the tithe to discipline you. One out of ten leaves nine. If you broke with nine out of ten, you broke. Just get a whole ten. Just get a whole ten. If you broke with nine out of ten, give the whole ten. Because, see, if you really want to talk about it, because many of y'all have gotten crazy in your old age, and you've heard stuff that is not true, and I come against, again, this Sunday, Creflo Dollar and that stupidity that he came up with because y'all don't know Creflo Dollar. You do not know where he comes from. The white preacher undergirded him. Built that ministry for him. I can tell you what his name is. I won't do it. He built the ministry for him. Set him in that place. I wish, I wish to God there was somebody that would set me up like that. And then you get all you got and all you can afford. And then you go to telling people, oh, I'm sorry, I lied to you. And they supposed to believe you after that. The devil is a lie. I don't believe nothing you said. Nothing. You can't say nothing to me about how I'm supposed to do what the word of God says, whether it's in relation to tithing or anything else. Because now I'm skeptical about all the rest of the stuff you preached about. And when it comes down to black folk, all you got to do is mix them up once or twice and it's over. It's over. But with the white church, they take care of their pastor. They take care of him in such a way that he's able to take care of his family. Them children go to school on scholarships and on money that the church makes certain that the pastor has. Yeah. But right now, we forget about offering because pastor love offering is something that we choose to give and we choose not to give. And you, ain't, you have not given if you can sit up here and think you're going to serve a holy God, hear a righteous word, receive a blessing from the Lord, and bypass the person that God has set you up with to keep watch over your soul. And then I'm not going to talk about those who penny any the preacher. Okay? Because I've been, I've been bound by the thinking of people right here at Mount Pleasant Church because I was a boy pastor. And to some of them who are now 80 plus years old still see me as a boy. Y'all better see this gray hair on my face. 
So, somebody better understand. I just celebrated my son's 38th birthday. Somebody better read it all over again. I am now 56, soon to be 57 years old. I'm about to be a senior. And I'm still doing the same thing having to struggle and make sacrifices for a church and for a people that will not hear the word of God and respond to it the way that they ought to. I'm fascinated that you can't give of yourself because you got issues with me and others. The devil is a lie. It's strange. I'm closing for real. I'll catch you next Sunday, Sunday after. It's strange how the Lord is blessing and how he's letting me see his word come to full fruition. People that have left this church are now calling. And they're calling because they have to. See, I read the word of God that said to me, don't worry about my enemies. I, I, I get concerned about them. I get concerned with some of the stupid things that they say. And some of the stupid and obnoxious things that they do. And yet, I pick up the phone. Is this Pastor Edward? Yes. Well, I'm calling because such and such. And I know that we had a disagreement. And you're getting ready to ask me something. And you just confess something. But you ain't done nothing. See, before you ask God to do something, this is why I tell you all about repenting, and expect for God to do anything for you, you need to ask for forgiveness first. Because you're still hanging out there in limbo. You cannot be so good, quick, fast, and hard when it comes down to you doing, saying, thinking, and spewing your thoughts and your venom on people predicated upon what you think and what you see because God will send you back. Mm -hmm. My mama is sick. And I was wondering. You, are you saying that you need me now? Are you saying that you need my services now? Well, thank God I'm not caught up in that because I want to tell you what I've been telling you for years. Somewhere down the line, you're going to need the Lord. I may not be in the picture. But you're going to need the Lord. And that's why the Bible says, consider others before you do them in. Consider others before you move and determine to devaluate them because you reap what you sow. Oh yeah, listen, God is setting you up through this text in order to bring forth, and I close on this point, to bring forth and to bring about another promise. He took you back. Wretched, unrighteous, ignorant, unregenerate. He took you back. He prepared your homeland for your return. Didn't have to do it. You could have left home, it was wrecked, and returned back home and it was ruined. He didn't do that. He has restored back to you what the canker worm has destroyed. And all he says is return unto me. And when you return unto me, do it wholeheartedly do it to the glory and to the honor of God and of his name and watch and see what he does if you lift your hands and your hands are empty make sure at least something is in your heart now give God a wave offering my hands may be open, my hands may be lifted, but there's something in my heart that's moving my hands to give God praise. When I tithe and I give my offering unto the Lord, I do it by raising my praise, by raising my standards, 
because I said it and I mean it. For God I live and for God I'll die. I, I, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. This little money will never get in the way of me and my God. My time and my preparation will never get in the way of me and my God. I'll tell the Lord, if you want it, you can have it. If you want me, here am I sitting me because God, you've been good. You've been better than good. I wish somebody would look up toward heaven after you done said what you don't have and tell God you've been buttery good to me. <laughs> you've been better than good to me down through the years all of my life. Yeah, you've been better than good to me. I still have a roof over my head. I still have clothes on my back. I still have shoes on my feet. I still have blood running through my vein. I still have a heart that's pumping. God, God, I, I give. somebody in preparation for what God is getting ready to do for you need to look up toward heaven and tell God set me up for the blessing ah, and anyway you bless me Ow! you don't gotta worry about me withholding my praise you don't have to worry about me withholding my pennies God oh, you've been good to me Whoop, I'm ready to shout now I'm ready to shout now I'm ready to shout now I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm blessed and ain't a thing you can do about it because y'all want to go to church for a minute this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away this peace I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away look at somebody and tell them neighbor if you talking about Jesus he's a friend of mine been good brought me I said it brought me from a mighty long way brought me oh, through dark valleys over high mountains brought me from the cotton field to Marshall Field, horseback, Cadillac, I'm all right now. I said, I'm all right now. And who wouldn't serve a God like that? That every time I bless him, he blesses me right back. Y'all ain't ready. Somebody tell the Lord in revelation to waiting on the next sermon tell God Lord set me up for my blessing go ahead 
unlock the windows go ahead get ready to open cause I ain't gonna let the, the devil uh, cheat me uh, or keep me uh, from doing uh, the will of God you've been uh, I'm stuck y'all you've been uh, so good to me you made many ways for me you opened many doors for me I'm here because of your love and if it had not been for you on my side I don't know do it God do it God cause in a minute I'm getting ready to pull out uh, this paper out of uh, my sack in a minute I'm getting ready to come down your aisle in a minute I'm getting ready to step up on your altar you know what I have but Lord stand up in me help me to overcome the ill of the devil so that I not only will be blessed but so that I I can be a blessing because your word says it's more blessed to give than to receive so that I can be a blessing to my church and to my pastor and to my community Lord I give so go on and get ready I ain't lying about it get ready unlock the window move the security latch out of the way and get ready to open the window of heaven look at your neighbor and tell him he'll do it for a dime he'll do it for a dime and an offering that's lofty an offering that's high an offering that is meaningful I'm giving like mama Oliver who didn't know it to the day whenever she goes out in her yard in Inglewood she calling the pastor and I'm bringing you something out of my garden. She's giving a heave offering. And I don't care. I don't care what you say. You, do, you better get folks out your ear about giving. And you better stop talking to folk about giving. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Are you going to do that? No matter who does it or who doesn't do it. You better make sure that if it's in God's will for your life, you better do it. If it's in God's word for your life to do it, you better do it. Because guess what? You, just like them, are going to stand before God individually. You can't point back in the line and say, well, you know, I was talking to them and they said they weren't going to do it. So I said, why should I do it? The reason you ought to do it is because God said do it. Because God's word said do it. Be led of the spirit if you got it in his spirit. That's where we mess up in our giving. We ain't led by the Spirit. We led by our thoughts. We led by our bills. God don't care nothing about your bills. Mm -mm, not at all. Because you can be debt free for a dime. Somebody should have shouted right there. I said, you can be debt free for a dime. You put God first. Put God back on the shelf. And do what the word of God says. Do so that you are no longer indicted. You are no longer under the conviction. You have heard the challenge. You have been moved and changed because of the conviction attached to the challenge. And now you are waiting on the promise. And let me say this. You go home and think about it. Let me say this. 
and, and you get ready to give, no matter what you think about it, no matter what other people convince you regarding it, God is going to keep his promise. I'm, I'm in the wrong church. I'm, I'm, I really am. Because I'm, I'm, y'all done went somewhere left for a while. I don't know whether you're trying to pretend to me and act like you're listening and you're just so all into what I'm saying. But your responses have got to change. Let the, because God has redeemed me. He has just redeemed me today. He has lifted me out of the lowlands of that where I was living. And I, and I know I wasn't doing right. Thank you, Reverend, for helping me understand. I was giving from my net. You owe God. No, you don't get God from the bottom. That's why we'd have told that stuff, you know, I love you from the bottom of my heart. What about the rest of it? Somebody said the trash and the debris is at the bottom. Listen, listen, brothers and sisters, if God is going to keep his promise. You need to do your part and repent and return back to him and start doing what it is that you know that he desires of you to do. Amen? <laughs> clap your hands and give God praise. I said clap your hands, give God praise for the word of God. <clears throat> Those of you who are in our virtual audience, there may be someone who's heard this word and you've been convicted, converted, and convinced. You want to become a member of the church, it's good to come and give your life to the Lord when you hear a sermon like this. It ain't one that's shouting and unshouted you in the church. It's one that's convicted you, converted you, and called you to come to Christ because of the convincing, converting power of God. The doors of the church stand open the jar. All you got to do is go to our website, www.ompmbc.com. Press that orange button that says become a member. Put your information there, name and phone number. By the time the day is over, before the day is over, someone would have called you and would have welcomed you into our family, prayed for you and counseled you with you. All you got to do is just put your information there. There might be somebody seated in this audience. You want to give your life to the Lord. You want to become a member of the church. And I say often in this appeal, you don't have to live in the city to be a member now. We have a virtual church. And you can become a member right here and right now. The doors of the church are open. Woman, man, boy, or girl. If you're here, if you're in our cyber sanctuary, come on, give your life to the Lord right now. The door is open. Because my worship
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is for real. My Come on, you that you give him some praise. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. My worship is for real. It's for real. Let's go. My worship is because my worship, my worship is for real. Come on, give him some praise here and at home. Come on, let's bless the name of God. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Come on, give him praise from your own personal life. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for loving me. Hallelujah. Oh God, I surrender to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. announcements while we're yet shouting. We will begin reading the book of Leviticus and Jude on this coming Wednesday, the first day of February. We will read the books of Leviticus and the book of Jude next Sunday, next Sunday during our noonday worship in person and virtual. We will celebrate with our deacons and trustees in the annual worship the leadership of this church met in December and we agreed we would ask every member with the exception of pastors annual days to support the ministry annual days with a $30 seed offering from every member. We want you to support our deacons and trustees on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. I want you to be in support. Don't forget prayer. On Tuesday, call in by 5.55. Amen. Those of you who are in our virtual audience in our cyber sanctuary, it's time for you to give. Go to one of our four platforms, www.ompmbc backslash giving. Give your tithes, offering, seed offering, www.ompmbc.com backslash offering. Today is a pastoral Sunday. Give your pastor's love offering there. Otherwise, paypal.com, click donations, give your tithe offering, pastoral love offering, any seed offering. You cannot utilize either of those means. You can write a check out right now. You can write a check, address it to the church, sign it, date it on the memo line. Tell us how much you're giving in tithe, in offering, pastoral love gift, and seed offering. Put it in an envelope addressed to the church at 6614 South Blackstone Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 606 Three seven. Put a stamp on it. Put it in the mail. We're soon to get it. Otherwise, if you're out and about this week, today, any day this week prior to Sunday, you can stop by the church on the Blackstone Street side. The first door that you will encounter is the black door. There's a mail slot in that door. Put your tithes, offering, pastoral love gift, seed offering in that mail slot. We're sure to get it. Just because you're not present does not mean that you have to be absent. Amen. Listen, this is Pastor and the people in the pew signing off. But before we do, this is the last Sunday in January of 2023, this first month. Next Sunday, first Sunday, call in, call in, call in by Wednesday at 5 p.m. Put your name on the reservation list. Come on to church. Be a part of the Lord's Supper service on next Sunday. Love to see your face in the place as we move to get back into church. This is Pastor People saying we love you until Tuesday at 555. Everybody put your hands together. Give God praise in this sanctuary. Amen. Listen as we make ready.